Okay, this Hangout on Air is live. Um, how are you doing, guys and girls? It's uh, our maybe 63rd, 4th uh, VJUG session. And today is our second extremely cool one, which is actually a, a DevOps for Kids session. Um, we had one maybe about three or four months earlier uh, with um, Aaron Gupta and his, uh, his son. And uh, we, because of the success, we're doing our, our second DevOps for Kids session. And uh, joining me today is Pavi Bata. Pavi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you, Simon? I'm um, very well, thank you. We're yeah, obviously at different times of the day. It looks a little yeah. bit darker here than it does. Uh, it does where you are. So you're calling in from San Francisco or just outside, right? Yeah, just outside of San Francisco. So it's morning here right now, actually. Okay, so it's just it's just gone five here, so we're at uh, we're very different parts of the day. Um, now, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Pavi. What what's uh, what are you doing at school these days? Yeah, so um, I'm a high schooler in um, I'm a high schooler and I'm in eleventh grade. I'm sixteen years old, and um, I got interested in technology just about like two years ago, I would say. But in school, um, I'm really interested in math, physics, um, psychology. Like those are just some of my favorite subjects. Um, in my free time, I also enjoy playing the drums, and I like to run or just try out new foods, just spend some time with family. So overall, like, there's like a wide variety of stuff I like to do, but technology is something I'm really passionate about. Awesome. And what did you get? What did you get passionate about technology? Was it through school or family or friends? I would actually say it's through family because my dad is a computer engineer and um, Arun actually really helped me get introduced to technology through DeVox for Kids. So that was like my first stepping stone into the technological world. So I think that's like mainly family, but also friends and stuff at school, but mainly awesome. family. Awesome. And uh, and this is this is interesting because um, I, I'm look, looking at your bio. Uh, I can see some great conferences like OzCon and Java One and a few other yeah. a few other big conferences. So, you know, how did you get involved? With that was that through Arun or through DevOps for Kids, and and how did you find them? Because they're some big conferences. Yeah, so that was actually all through DevOps for Kids. Like, it started off really small. It started off with me just doing um, this Squishy Circuits workshop at just like a local like venue, and then from there it just kept building and building and building. And last summer, which was I think my recent, was it went all the way to OSCON in Portland, which was like really cool. So it's just been continuing to build, and each workshop has just been going so well that I've just been getting the opportunity. And Arun has been asking me like, oh, we. Um, and this venue has called and they want you to do squishy circuits here. So it's just, it's building and building and it's just really cool because I've been able to do it with so many different people in so many different locations. Awesome. That sounds really, really amazing actually. Yeah. And, and I know, I know there are a lot of people who, um, who, you know, have been at, at work for many, many years who would be very uh, concerned about presenting in front of many people at OzCon and Java One. So it's great to hear. It's great to hear you've, you know, experienced all this at, at a much younger age as well. It's a really great experience. Um, so, okay, we're going to be talking about squishy circuits then. Um, so tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, so... I wanted to start off the session with just explaining like how I got introduced to Squishy Circuits and what exactly the concept is, like where in the world did I get this idea from, and then just go through a basic dry run of what a typical workshop looks like um, and how it goes through with the kids, like what they go through, um, the different steps to creating a Squishy Circuit and why it's so cool. So um, if you want me to start off with talking about Squishy Circuits, I could start yeah, off with absolutely. that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just start by saying also as well, uh, people don't need to necessarily follow along today, but if um, if what we'll probably end up with saying is where you can get all the kit, what you need to get, um, and, and then maybe look at the look at this uh, session again on replay. This session will be available straight away on virtualjug.com, um, so people can watch it as many times as they want and get familiar with it. Um, also, if anyone wants to ask any questions, uh, if you're on, make sure you're on IRC as well, um, and that's pound virtual jug on Freenode. Or if you're at virtualjug.com, you can just uh, access IRC uh, right next to the video the, where that's embedded into the into the website. Um, and ask any questions there, and I can relay them straight to Pavi. So uh, yeah, with that, let's uh, let's jump forward and uh, go for it, Pavi. Okay, so that's great. So Squishy Circuits is actually something that combines science and art and technology all in one, which is a great thing about it. It's perfect for the younger generation because what it does is it introduces circuits, introduces the concepts of um, like electricity, current, conductive, insulating, all introduces by building circuits using art. Because what you can do with Squishy Circuits is you can actually shape Play-Doh figures and then light up your circuits using LEDs. So um, 
I actually got this idea from the University of St. Thomas when I was looking because I wanted to create a workshop curriculum. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I did know like a lot of kids don't get the opportunity to go straight into like programming or they feel timid to actually start and especially with like girls they really feel uncomfortable so I thought that squishy circuits was a perfect way for those kids who are like they want to go into technology but they also have a lot of other interests and like art is such a huge interest in so, so many little kids so this was like a great way to incorporate it all um so how did you how did you get involved was it was it through programming first or um, I got involved in technology not exactly with programming I just always liked science and it just kind of like dwelled from there and now I'm I'm I like I've tried programming and stuff and I'm slowly getting there but it really started off with these simple things and I think that's what's the great thing about squishy circuits it's like the perfect starting like the stepping stone to go into the more higher advanced concepts like programming Good. yeah so um, in order to do a workshop what it would usually be is each workshop would have around like 30 kids I would say and um, the basics of a workshop it starts off with me explaining uh, the basics the concepts of squishy circuits from conductive dough insulating dough current electricity and then the cool thing about the workshop is they actually get to make the conductive and insulating dough so in squishy circuits you use two types of dough which is conductive and insulating and um, that allows you to create your circuits. So before we begin with the actual presentation slides to go through, I just wanted to show everybody what exactly a kit looks like that each child receives in a workshop. So we have this Devox for Kit kit right here. And um, inside what each child receives is they get some LEDs. So I just open this up right here. They get some wires to begin with. Um, there's a few LEDs, a little hard to see, but they get um, a handful of LEDs. And then we have, um, we have our battery pack, and then they get separate batteries outside to add into here. So this is just like the starting for what they can use. So I'm actually going to move on to my presentation now, if that's okay, if there's any other questions before. No, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. Okay, so yeah. So could everybody? I think everybody can see this. Yeah, we can All right. see the uh, session notes. Yeah. So this is the actual curriculum and presentation that I use for each of my workshops. So as you can see, it's inspired by the University of St. Thomas. And then I have just my email and my blog that I use for my project. It starts off with me asking, like my whole purpose is I really want to get these kids really interested and hyped up to really start the session. So I ask them, if they've ever played with Play-Doh because I don't think they'll realize that with Play-Doh we can actually make these circuits. So um, to start off, this is some sample stuff that you can make with squishy circuits and the thing with squishy circuits is it's really up to your imagination. Like there's so much you can do. Like as you can see in this picture, I have a heart and I have a police car and I have a flower, a butterfly, a car. There's just so much you can do to create these circuits that are just so much more simple than your basic simple and parallel circuits. Um, it goes into me explaining the concept of circuit. So we have a circuit is a circular path through which current can flow. It needs a battery or a source of energy that can make the current flow through it. And then lastly, it needs something interesting like an LED, which does something when the current flows. So all this is pretty basic, but that's the great thing is this workshop is really intended to just introduce technology. So that's why I, tr I try to keep us a basic level so the kids don't feel intimidated. Um, we go into what is an LED. An LED is a very small light that is often colored. So in the workshop, they actually receive red, yellow, green, um, different colors of LEDs so they can try out what they want to use. Um, and then how oh, each LED has two legs, a short and a long leg. The long is the plus or the positive pole. The short is a negative or the negative pole. And this is actually a really important concept that is important to stress during the workshop because when actually connecting the LED and wires into your Play-Doh, a major difficulty the kids have is switching the poles. So they have the black wire, which is a negative, 
connected with the long pole, which won't work out because we have positive and negative. So this is like a major part to stress during the workshop. Uh, we start off with I'm a battery and how a battery stores energy. It converts stored chemical energy into electrical energy. So um, I usually ask the kids like what exactly, like where they use batteries in everyday life just to relay how our batteries we're going to be using squishy circuits, how batteries are so universal and they're used everywhere, like when you go camping, on your phone, all that good stuff. So next thing goes to how we have wires. We have negative and positive wires, and that goes back to the LED, how I was talking about there was a long pole and the short pole. Um, we have the black wire, which is a negative, so it's connected to the short leg of the LED. And then we have the red wire, which is the positive, which is connected with the um, longer leg of the LED for the positive. Okay, so this just recaps all of that long leg with the red wire and the short leg with the black wire. So all of this really is just to introduce circuits, current, because I'm coming into these workshops expecting that um, many of these kids have never never like been introduced to technology in a hands-on way because when I was doing this whole squishy circuits curriculum all over the Bay Area I did this workshop at many title one schools which are actually underprivileged schools where um, the kids are not they do not get that much like they're not as um, fortunate to be able to take enrichment classes outside of school like they can do robotics outside of school or they can go to like science classes like that's not really something they have so I wanted to do this to really introduce science to them in a hands-on perspective so that's why this is all pretty basic but it's all very comprehensive for them to really step into technology so the next thing we go through is current and current is a flow of electrons through a conductive material it is the same at all points in a circular path it's measured in amps and you can think of it as the water flowing out of the tank through pipes so with this animation it's clear that the electrons are going through and then we have the protons right there So the next part of my workshop that I usually go into is explaining the difference between conductive and insulating. And that's a major part of squishy circuits. We really want to show how we can make two different types of doughs with different recipes and how one will allow the LED to light up and the other will not. So I actually want to switch and demonstrate that right now. Um, yeah. So I'm going to first start off with demonstrating and actually showing the squishy circuits that's made of conductive dough. And this one will be in red, and you'll be able to see the LED actually lighting up. So I'm just going to turn that on. And then if everybody can see that. Yeah. So right here, we have my LED lighting up. I have my black wire and my red wire and my battery pack. So this is what I start off by showing to really show like, look here, I have a circuit and that's Play-Doh, but I made an LED light up, so that's pretty cool. And then I can also add on more LEDs if I wanted to. So I have two lighting up now. I could keep adding on, but I won't for now. But um, So this demonstrates the first squishy circuits that I usually show them. Then I want to show them I have another hard figure right here. So I have this one right here. So I usually ask if they think they will this will light up because this is two different figures. They're both heart shaped. They're just different colors. But like, let's see if this will actually light up because this is a major concept of squishy circuits. So I'm just going to move my battery pack. And I'm going to put in my black wire with my negative leg, which is a short one, and my red wire, which is a positive. Just add that in here. So now I'm going to turn on my battery pack, and we're going to see if this green LED I have right here lights up. So let's just turn this on. Okay, there we go. So it actually did not light up. 
So when I do this, it's actually very confusing for the kids at first. They don't understand, like, what's the difference? How come this one isn't lighting up, but this LED was lighting up? Like, could it be the color? Could it be, oh, this heart doesn't look as pretty as this one? Um, this one is just, it has a different, like, material. It's just the way it feels is different. So these are all what they think is the differences. So I usually ask, like, why do you think that this LED is lighting up, but this one isn't? Um, and that's when I go into explaining the difference between conductive and insulating. So with this two circuits I have, this one was actually made with conductive dough, and this one was made with insulating dough. So I'm going to go in and explain the difference between that because that's like a major aspect. So we'll just light this one up. And there we go. That's super cool. And while you're, while you're switching screens, actually, um, we have a, a question from Rick Rack. Um, can can the sets that you showed actually the bag with the DevOps for kids on it? I yes. guess um, can that be ordered online or or can this stuff be easily made? So these sets are actually like I didn't order them all together as a set. I ordered the individual parts. So I ordered like a mass amount of LEDs, um, battery packs, and then wires on websites online. So separately, it wasn't as it all came as a pack. I actually made these kits. Like I would sit down uh, before each workshop and uh, put all these kits together. So I'd put like six LEDs per kit, one battery pack, and then the wires. So these are not actually kits that you can buy all together. You buy the individual parts. Got it. And you make the dough yourself, or is that is that all doing? Yeah, so the dough it is actually an interesting question because that's like a major part. Um, earlier, for my earlier workshops, I used to make all the dough myself at home, and that took a really, really long time because I was making a mass amount of play dough. Um, and there's a recipe that I'll share later on how you make it at home. And it just honestly was too much to make and then take all to the workshop. So as I went to bigger workshops at OSCON and Java One, I started shifting to actually buying Play-Doh and using that because store-bought Play-Doh is actually conductive. And that's exactly what oh, I was wow. making at home. And it was better like consistency, it was easier to work with, it wasn't as sticky. So it ended up being way easier. But then for the insulating dough, I did make it at home because you cannot buy insulating that's, dough. That's so interesting. I'd have just assumed that all Play-Doh was just insulating anyway, but they're actually conductive normally. Like. Yeah, Play-Doh is actually conductive. So the one wow. you buy at like a toy store or something, it's all conductive. That's and it, it works really well. Yeah, so. That seems, that seems kind of dangerous as well, but amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, but in the workshop, they actually, the kids actually do make conductive and insulating dough. They make just a little just to see the difference between how one uses different materials than the other and actually go through over that in a bit. So we're just going to go on to. I think Pasamonte here is now very, very uh, pleased he knows Play Doh is conductive now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we go through the heart figure, and then we just go through the difference between conductive and insulating. So now you guys know that um, Play-Doh is actually conductive, and it allows um, current to flow through while the insulating one, which was a colorless one that I showed earlier, how the LED didn't light up, it was because it was actually insulating dough made with different materials, which I'll just go over in a bit. So um, we just go through real quick, like metal wires conductive, just so I know that they know exactly, like just the differences, just as a like a mini quiz. We have a copper penny, a penny is conductive. We have a water bottle, which plastic is insulating, obviously. And then I just ask, this is a fun bee, I just ask like, oh, what do you think the human body is, conductive or insulating? And a lot of them think it's insulating, some of them think it's conductive, but it's actually conductive. Well, yeah, it's actually made of Play-Doh, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep, the human body's made of Play-Doh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, this is just a recap how we have the same exact circuits. I had two heart circuits. They were both in the shape of a heart. I was using the same batteries, the same battery pack, but how one was able to light up and one wasn't because obviously one was resisting the current while the other was not. Which means the, the electrons can't pass through uh, the material, whereas uh, with the uh, conductive, they can. Yeah, exactly. So another thing about squishy circuits is you can put insulating dough in between conductive dough and then um, light up your LED. So that's like the whole point of how sometimes like when you like the reason I introduced 
insulating dough is so they can actually incorporate insulating dough into their designs so you can make it more complex. So you can put insulating dough between two pieces of conductive dough and the reason being is you cannot have your two pieces of conductive dough touching and that is because current always takes the path of least resistance so if I had my two pieces of conductive dough touching the current would go straight through and it would not go through the LED so it was it may have been hard to see but actually when I was showing the heart circuit my two pieces of dough were separated from each other I had my positive and my negative one connected with my black wire and one connected with my red wire and they were actually separate so it's important to make sure that when you're building these circuits you keep those two positive and negative doughs apart if you want to connect it into one figure, you have to put insulating dough in the middle like I did right here with my this white piece of dough right down the middle. So the next thing we go over usually in uh, the workshop is just the difference between series circuit and parallel circuits. Just so when they're making their actual circuits, I can go around and ask them like, oh, do you think this is a series circuit or oh, do you think this is a parallel circuit? Just so they get a better idea and concept of what exactly is going on. So we know that a series circuit is when components are connected along a single path, so the same current flows through all the components, and it's usually one loop. And then we have a parallel circuit where components in a parallel are connected to the same voltage applied to each component. So we have two loops or more, so I've got one right here, and then I've got just one right here. Okay, so after this whole with the workshop going so usually about 30 minutes into the when all I've explained all the concepts how I just went through um, I've explained like the circuits electricity conductive insulating this is where the fun really starts I would say and um, this is where they start and actually make their conductive and insulating dough so as I mentioned earlier I now use store-bought play-doh and I bring in different colors of play-doh so i usually buy like blue, green, red, orange, and yellow Play-Doh and bring that in so they can be able to use it. But I also do a part of the portion of the workshop where they actually make the Play-Doh on the spot. They make just a little, just so they get to feel like how it is to make it and what's the difference between conductive and insulating. Like what different materials are we using? So um, before I begin though, there's just some safety rules that are super important to go through when running this workshop. Um, okay, so the first one we have is never connect the ends of the wire directly to each other. So this I'm referencing to the battery pack. When we have those black and red wires coming out, it's important that when that battery pack is turned on, they can't touch. And then do not connect the LED directly to the wire without any Play-Doh in between. It's super important to actually put in your wires into the play-doh and then put the led on instead of connecting the legs of the led directly to the wire it will be there will be too much current flowing through and it will just blow up um the next thing is we are to turn off the battery pack when we're not using it so the cool thing is the battery packs that i use in my kits the ones that i bought online i actually got the ones with the switch therefore when they're actually first building their circuit like they're constructing their play-doh how they want it to work what they want to use they can just turn off their battery pack so they don't have to worry about the wires touching and the last thing refers to our actual cooking of the play-doh which is um the volunteers go around giving hot water when creating the conductive dough because that's actually an ingredient for the conductive dough. Ideally, you want to make conductive dough on the stove, but obviously in a workshop, we don't have stoves, so we just have to substitute hot water instead. So when you uh, the the reason the reason you uh, you're putting you, you, it's a bad idea to uh, to connect the LEDs directly to the play dohs then is because there's no resistance, obviously in the LED yeah. itself. Um, does the Play-Doh have enough resistance in it so that you don't actually need to add any further resistors or anything like that? Yeah, the Play-Doh um, actually does have enough resistance. So that's the whole thing of when you put the LED directly, you have absolutely no resistance. But the Play-Doh naturally does have resistance because obviously you're using like natural products at home and it's not going to be perfectly non-resistant. Like even though it's conductive, it definitely is still resistant. So the Play-Doh does have enough and you do not need to put any more resistors in there to stop the current from flowing. Okay, so... Um, in, so this is just like a kind of breakthrough. It's just a cute little map of what 
is in a workshop how I split the teams into five teams. We have a black team, a red team, a yellow team, and a green team, and a blue team. And this is just so that this is these teams are just solely just to make the play dough because I have what I have is each team makes the conductive dough of their team color, and everybody makes ins insulating dough. It's just that. You make the connective dough of only your team color, and then I give you the other colors because that's what I have store bought. So, for example, the red team, what they do is they make the red conductive dough. So I get the red food coloring. I have kits with all the flour, sugar, salt, everything you need to make these doughs. I have them all pre-measured, and I just give it to the team in a box. And really, all they have to do is mix the ingredients in and just add their food coloring, uh, take turns in their table, the groups of like five, six, and just mix the dough, knead it. So it becomes really fun. It gets messy, but it's just super enjoyable that they all get to make different colors and see what exactly, like how this dough is made. So they start off with the insulating dough, which each team makes and it's universal. It's the same color. It's just that colorless color. Um, and each team will get one and a half cups of flour three tablespoons of vegetable oil, half cup of sugar, and six tablespoons of distilled water. So this is actually the ingredients for insulating dough. And um, it comes, like, I give it to them in these little boxes with a spoon, so it's just super easy to just mix it all together. Everything is measured. It's just a whole bunch of fun, and they just got to make the dough. And you literally just throw it all together and mix. Yeah, it's literally just throwing it all together because like measuring it on the spot would be too difficult. But I tell them like exactly what they're doing. Like I say, like this is what you're using and this is like the ingredients for insulating dough. And all you really have to do is just put it all together, mix it with a spoon and use your hands and knead it and just have fun. And then the next one we make is the conductive dough, which is actually has different ingredients. Here we're using salt instead of sugar because salt has ions that actually help with the conductivity. We're adding the cream of tartar, which um, adds acidity, which really helps with the conductivity. And instead of using cream of tartar, which is a bit on the expensive side, you can also use um, lemon juice. Just something that's acidic to really add that and boost acidity for the conductiveness. We have vegetable oil now, we have hot water because we can't use a stove, food coloring, and then just our flour as normal. And this has more ingredients, obviously, and it's a bit harder to make, but you just mix it all together again, and you just mix it all up, and then there you go, you have your conductive dough. So now each team usually has like a bit of conductive dough and a bit of insulating dough, which they then split with their team evenly, and then I come around and give them more dough to use, which is the one I bought, which is store-bought. So therefore, before they actually start making their circuits, they have a wide variety. They've got red, yellow, green. Like, they have all these different colors of conductive dough and insulating dough. So it really, like, boosts it up and makes it more fun. So are there any questions before I move on? Uh, we have one question about the resistor. Uh, yes. But that's about it at the moment. Okay. So the next thing is... So after we've gone through the workshop we have so far, we have our, um, we've gone through the concepts, the squishy circuits, the whole um, current, electricity, uh, all of that. And then we've made our dough, which usually takes about, I would say, 20 to 25 minutes to make both doughs. And it can get pretty messy depending on how many people are there. It's actually time to start building the circuits. And this is what they do for the remainder of the workshop. And this part is pretty open-ended. I usually ask them to start off by making the ski man, which is just simple with two pieces of conductive dough and you have your LED, which is like the little man standing on his skis. <laughs> um, because this really just helps them get the basic idea. And a normal problem is when they're starting, like they put the LEDs wrong in the battery pack, like they have the battery switch. So they're like, oh, my circuit isn't working. What do I do? So that's like a major problem or, um, they're using the wrong type of dough. They're using insulating dough instead of conductive dough, or they have the poles of the LED switch. So they have the negative, which is a black with the longer one when it should be the other way around. Um, just these simple mistakes that happen a lot. So building the first circuit usually takes some time because everybody's on a different level. Some people are quickly making it and they are able to get it, but some obviously aren't. So this is the first activity. Um, once they make it, usually everybody's able to get it though within like five minutes. It's really cool because it, you can see definitely that they find it very cool and how it's just something so simple as Play-Doh they never imagined you can make a circuit with. 
And as soon as this activity is done, it's just crazy how they are able to just like excel themselves and start like thinking of all these ideas. Like ideas are just speeding out. They're like, oh, I should make this. I should make this. Oh, this is so cool. Let me use these extra wires. Or I have these colors. What if I mix them and then I put insulin dough in between or I add more LEDs? Like it's just so cool how suddenly like the imagination level is just, like soaring. Um, and then so – after this part of the workshop, it's very open-ended. As I said earlier, I do go through activities like you can make a simple heart, how I showed earlier, um, the complex heart with more like the insulin dough in between, or you can go through and make a police car. This one's like a bit more complicated because you have to think like how do I want to place this so that the LEDs are on different positive and negative, but I make sure that the dough is not connecting. So I put insulin dough in between. We have a car with a front headlight. So these are just all examples that I usually play through the presentation. I say like these are just some like examples of what you can use, but it's really up to your imagination what you want to do. Um, Couple of, a couple of other questions that have come in. Um, yeah. One from Alex the Dom. Uh, how long does the conductive dough that, that, that you make remain conductive? Has it got a kind of lifespan? Oh, yeah. So that's a great question. So uh, the conductive dough that they make in the workshop, it doesn't have a lifespan. But a thing you have to worry about is we're using all natural ingredients. We're using flour. We're using salt. Like, you cannot just keep it forever. And especially, like, the conductive dough usually lasts for a bit longer. I would say you want to keep it once you've made it for, like, two weeks, two to three weeks, but after that you want to throw it out. It'll still remain conductive, that's not the problem, it's just that you're using natural ingredients, you really don't want to keep it in your house forever. Um, but that's actually a bigger problem with the insulating dough, because in the insulating dough you're using sugar, and sugar is going to um, grow mold super, like, pretty quickly, and so you really want to throw that away within two weeks, but in, in terms of, like, conductivity, it doesn't lose it, it's just that it's just a concern of these are all natural ingredients. You really don't want to keep it in your house forever. But to preserve it, usually putting it in the fridge helps with the ingredients. But it's no like limit on the oh the lifespan of conductivity. It's just the fact that you're using natural products, so you want to throw it away relatively yeah. quickly. Uh, and another question from Passamonte. Um, it does the amount of dough affect the resistance? So, for example, if you were to, with that previous example or a couple of examples back with the, um, uh, with the ski man, if, mm -hmm. if you was to reduce the amount of dough used there, would it burn out the LED or, or conversely, would, it, would the LED get di a lot dimmer if you used a lot of Play-Doh? No, it actually does not. The amount of Play-Doh you use does not impact it at all, I would say. I mean, if it does, it's relatively minimum, but it does not. Um, what really impacts, though, the intensity of the LED is how close you put the wires to your actual LED. So when I'm putting the wires into the Play-Doh, and if I put the legs of my LED very close to the wires, that's what actually impacts it the most. The amount of dough you use does not, does not make an impact. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just have like the traffic light, we got a butterfly. So that traffic light was cool, so you just, you just move the uh, terminals down from uh... Yeah, this was, yeah. This was cool, yeah. Some of the pictures is, um, the LED may not be lighting up because it was a bit hard to see, but it's the same concepts. Like, it's really, there's no set way to make any of this. Like, there's so many different ways you can light it up in each one, which is just so cool about it. Um, we just have a simple flower here with I have the yellow on the side, which is connected with a positive, and then I have another side with a negative. And then this just wraps it all up. So I just want to go through some parts of the actual circuit to explain what I talked about earlier. Um. There's one other question from Ramped, which is what are the safety pins for, but I'm not sure I saw safety pins. Oh, okay, yeah, let me... Let's go through that one sec. Um, yeah, so there was, uh, I think he's referencing to the keychains that there were there. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so let me explain that. Okay, so with the keychains, so when I originally started these workshops, I was using a different battery pack than I'm using right now. Um, I don't currently have it with me, but the one I'm using right now is this one, and it's got pretty long wires that are pretty sufficient. But the ones earlier had short wires that were really hard to connect. I was like having, the kids were having difficulty, like they were so short that they were just like coming out of the Play-Doh. So what we did was we 
added keychains to the wires and then added more wires. So therefore, the wires became longer and it was much easier to like play around. The wires were just longer, basically. And the keychains we used were, they served as basically like just wire connectors. They were conductive and the current was still able to flow through and go about. So all you were getting basically was longer wires. And that's probably actually quite good at it because you're likely to have more, more Play-Doh models than yeah. your battery packs. So you can just keep moving it without constantly uh, piercing the, the Play-Doh. Exactly. Like it was getting hard and they were making like complex figures and the battery packs were just coming out. So that's what we decided. But then we decided that it was just time to get better battery packs <laughs> where the wires just weren't like as flimsy and just really bad. So that's what worked out. So I just want to demonstrate how when you put the... So I've got this going and then if I move the wires farther away, the LED actually becomes lighter. I mean, it's hard to see, but if I was to move it here... I move it down here. It's probably hard to see how it's changing, but it is. It's becoming a bit lighter. I mean, it doesn't make that big of a difference, but that's something that does impact it a little. And then hopefully everybody can see here. But the another thing I want to explain how I was talking about earlier was I have the two pieces, but they're not connected. If I was to connect it, like I just added, just touch these two parts together, the LED instantly turns off. It's like so a why, switch off. So why does it get lighter when you take the uh, wires further away? Yeah, when I get the light, when I take the wires further away, it gets a little dimmer in intensity. And also when I connect these two pieces of dough, this is hard to see. but when I just connect these two pieces, the LED turns off. Okay. And when so I take we, it apart. So are you saying, were you saying when you move the wires further away from the LED, it gets lighter or darker? It gets lighter. It gets lighter. Okay, so why does it get lighter when you take it further away? Because I would have thought there would be more resistance. Um, I'm actually... See, usually I'm not sure actually, but like when I put it closer, it's usually just a bit. I mean, the difference is not that it's not that significant, but that's what's happened in the past. Uh -huh. Um, usually, and but then another thing is also when you just keep adding more LEDs, each LED gets lighter intensity. Yeah. I mean, but that's obvious because you have just a limited amount of battery power that you're using. But yeah, but the thing I wanted to go through was how when I'm just like emphasizing the importance of keeping these two pieces separate from each other. Yeah. So oh, actually, have... when you say lighter, do you mean less bright, less intense? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. I think when you said lighter, you mean more light. Oh, no. I no, meant, that, I, that, yeah, that I meant, sense, yeah. I meant like lighter as in less light. Yeah. Because oh, okay. when I'm adding, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, sorry for the confusion, guys. But yeah. Um, so the closer it is, the closer it is to the LED, it's, it's brighter. And the yes. further away it is, it's dimmer. Yes. Okay. But yes, that was the right terminology to use. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the concept of that. Um, and how you can put insulating dough in between these two pieces instead, or you just have to keep them apart because you just can't get them touching. Because that's like a major problem that's created at these workshops. Um, so are there any questions right now, or are we good? Uh, so we did the safety pin one, um, and that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me see if there's any other final questions. Yeah, and then I can just uh, introduce the Arduino part real quick, because that's a pretty cool part. So the Arduino is the next stage, and this is the this gets yes. even geekier, right? Yeah, this just really propels forward. Let's, let's carry on, and uh, as, as any questions come in, we can take them a little bit later. Okay, yeah. So the next part of this workshop, I did not introduce it at every um, workshop. It was just I did it in some. It was also with the help of my dad. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't make it today, but um, was the Arduino. So this is an Arduino kit, and Devox for Kids actually does host Arduino workshops, like specifically just um, programming with Arduino and the Internet of Things. So we just thought it would be a good idea was to use like Arduino and actually squishy circuits to show how you can use something more complex to really like elevate the the, um, the circuit that you already made. Like how squishy circuits, like the basics of circuits, but how you can program circuits to change your LED. You can make your LED blink. Um, your LED can change colors. I mean, like depending on what you want to do, but it's just how an Arduino can program it. So. 
usually at the workshop, if we did, the kids did not actually get a chance to program with Arduino because this wasn't an Arduino workshop. It was simply an introduction to circuits. But we would end with an Arduino demonstration to just you know show how you can really elevate your squishy circuits. So here I have an Arduino right here. I have the breadboard, but I'm just going to take that out for now. So what I'm going to do is with my hard circuit, I'm just going to take these wires out and switch from using my battery pack to using the actual Arduino. I'm just going to move that over here. And then I'm just going to take out this red wire from the breadboard and add it right here. And then take out the black wire and add it. That's a and add it to the side. And then I will just turn on my Arduino. OK, so as you guys can see over here, the LED is now blinking on and off after a certain time interval. And it is no longer just staying on. So this is like super simple. And it's just really the basics. It's just cool how it's something I think the real really cool thing about this is what I find really cool. It's something as simple as Play-Doh. I'm now able to control and make into circuit and then actually control it using Arduino. Like, I mean, I grew up pl playing with Play-Doh all the time, but when like just seeing this is just so cool. And that's what I think is just the overall the really cool thing about this workshop in general. Like, this is so simple, but it's just so cool I find how this is just like lighting up the LED with Play-Doh. Like that's just like something I would never imagine would happen. But yeah, so. And uh, so what are you running on that uh, Arduino then to make it flash? Um, we're just running the Arduino program. I do not know the exact specifics because um, my dad actually had that. But it's just, we just programmed it to flash every a couple seconds. Cool, and you can. I'm sure you can do the same with Raspberry Pis and Pi Zeros yes, and stuff yeah, like that exactly. as well. Um, yeah, it works with Raspberry Pi too. Um, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, that looks that looks really amazing. Uh, a couple of other questions um, coming up. Um, uh, Passamonte asks any particular model for the battery packs. And interestingly, you have obviously the the um, probably more expensive um, battery pack there. In the in the other images, it was just a couple of A batteries. By the look of it, uh, where where would you where would you recommend people, or what kind of battery packs would you recommend people just starting out should get? Um. Okay. So the ones that I started off with were the ones that weren't closed, like they didn't have that case, and they weren't the on and off pack. It depends on what like what your purpose is. If you're running an actual workshop, I would suggest you buy these ones. But if you are just doing it at home and it's not as important, like the quality and like how many people are gonna be using it, then it's just okay to buy the simple ones. The website, like where I got all this material, I can actually link it later. I'll just go through and find the exact link where I got exactly this battery pack, okay. exactly where I got the LEDs. Like I can probably, I think it would be better if I could just link it after this and just yeah. share it on. Sure. Um, so, so, I can we'll, get the exact link. so what we'll yeah. do actually afterwards, we we do a write up for every VJUG session. So what we can do is uh, we'll include all the links about where you can get all the equipment, uh, or maybe some suggested links, and you can you know buy it wherever you want. But these are these are some uh, the, that uh, that you use maybe. Yeah, and I'll go through like every model I've used and my pros and cons because there's definitely been some issues with battery packs in the past. And another thing I just want to go through real quick is for anyone planning to actually host a workshop um, with a bunch of kids is that when you have these battery packs, it's careful to make sure that they do not dangle it exactly from the wire. Like if I were to let go of my hand right here and just dangle it with these wires, they actually break apart because obviously these battery packs, I'm trying to buy at a pretty cheap price because I want to keep my budget for each workshop low. So they aren't the best quality. They work really well, but it's, I mean, they will break if you're just dangling from here. And that's been a problem where wires have just come out. So it's just important to, um, like in each workshop really go through these all these rules and safety rules to ensure that everything goes well but yeah okay awesome couple more questions um one from where are we let's see uh one from city oh no sorry one from rick rat first where did you get this fun idea so was this one of your ideas or was this uh, a devops for kids idea that already existed 
Um, this was actually an idea that already existed. It wasn't from DevOps for Kids. It was from the University of St. Thomas. And oh. I can link that later. Yeah, if you just search up on the web, University of St. Thomas Squishy Circuits, you'll find a whole website on Squishy Circuits and uh, their idea. This is actually all started by them. There was actually a TED Talk that one of the people who works there, who I think created this, she talked about it. Um, and it was really cool. So yeah, this is not my idea and it's something that was started by them and has become pretty widespread actually like from then I'm not sure how long ago they created it, but I've seen squishy circuits all over the web now It's becoming increasingly popular, but it's not about the, circuits ideas. And I wonder what the first person was doing when they when they first found out that uh, yeah, I wonder, yeah. Um, Okay, one, one other question from Cydia. We met we did actually cover this a little bit earlier, um, but just in case anyone else is, is curious, uh, Cydia asks, why does the LED go off when the dough touches each other? Yeah, so that's a great question, and I think it's actually a really major part of Squishy Circus um, that the attendees actually have troubles with, is when the dough touches each other, what's happening is your, resist your current is going straight through the dough. It's not getting a chance to go through the LED. The LED is like a bridge almost, and when it's going straight through, I mean, like when the two pieces of dough are touching, the current goes straight through, like in a circle, just keep going and going and going. It'll never go over the LED like a bridge and actually light up the LED. Because the thing about current is current always takes the path of least resistance, and the dough is is less resistance than the actual LED. So the current will just keep going through. So it's important to keep your two pieces of dough separate from each other or put insulating dough in between. So the current cannot go through the insulating dough because it's too resistant, so it'll go through the LED. Awesome. So I hope that kind of clears things out, but yeah, very similar to me. If I uh, if I go from A to B, I'll always take the fastest route. But exactly. If that, if that road gets blocked or whatever, I have to find a, a, the next fastest route to get yeah. to that same. Yeah. Current will always take the fastest route, and that's why you want to ensure that it's separate from each other, so it can actually go through the LED, which is like a bridge almost. Awesome. Uh, no more questions yet. A lot of people saying thanks um, uh, for for the great session and the great idea. Um, anything else you wanted to cover before we uh, before we finish up? Um, no, I think I've covered um, pretty much everything. I do have uh, like a blog with more instructions that will really help and with the curriculum, they're free to use this curriculum, which we can obviously link in the after session with all the uh, links to the battery pack and supplies and stuff. So I'll just put that all in there. But no, I think I've covered almost everything. If anybody has any other questions, I'm free to answer. Right. No, no, that's cool. And it was a, a really fun session, very, very uh, energetic and motivational. I think hopefully there's lots of, uh, lots of people that have, you know, in, uh, got motivated to, to, to actually try it and give it a go. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned you mentioned before we actually uh, started the call. Um, this this can be done by kids of actually many ages, from ten to twelve, even up to fifteen, or as as young as seven or eight even. So um, yeah. I think there's very different aspects to it as to which you can which you can teach different kids. Like if you're seven to eight, I think it's probably well worth you know just focusing more on the fun of it. Uh, whereas when you know with the older kids, probably it, it's maybe even worth looking more at why it's happening and that kind of thing so different kids at different ages can learn different things but i guess the most important thing is actually getting uh, getting involved with it and getting excited about actually playing with it and letting your creation and your, your um you know yeah, your, your mind run free with the designs and stuff yeah, and I think it's such a novel idea. It's just so like out of the blue, like how you're using Play-Doh and almost everybody has played with Play-Doh when they were little. Like it's just such a like popular thing that it's just so cool. And I've noticed like even adults find this interesting. Like they find it fun to even just like play around and create circuits. It's just because this is so different and it's so like new that it's just it's just really fun for all ages. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to grab some of my son's Play-Doh now. I know it's conductive and uh, <laughs> have a go. <laughs> cool. Well, Pavi, thank you very, very much for your time. It's been a, mm -hmm. it's been a really fun session and uh, we'll write all this up, make sure all the links uh, are going to be available and mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll add that to the meetup and also to the virtualjug.com website so everyone who's watching can, um, can, can view there. Uh, are there any other um, uh, DevOps for Kids style um, URLs or, or links that are, are useful for people to see other um, DevOps for Kids um, sessions and things like that? Um, well, for people living in the Bay Area, there is the DevOps for Kids meetup where they can actually join and go to workshops. I mean, we have like Arduino, Minecraft modding, Java, Python, all of that, JavaScript. Um, in terms of actual curriculum, I'm not sure, but I'm sure if you contact Arun, he will be happy to give out curriculum to really 
go through those sessions. Cool, and definitely for people watching, do do check out see if you see if you do have a local uh, DevOps yeah. chapter. Yeah, uh, definitely. And if you, and if you don't, um, you know, consider consider maybe even creating one because I think exactly. uh, the guys would yeah. love that at, uh, at DevOps for Kids. Um, so. Uh, oh, in fact, Daniel DeLuca has just literally just posted in um, devoxforkids.org slash events. Um, and Daniel DeLuca is actually one of the guys who runs uh, uh, DevOps for Kids. So, so do feel free to, um, to contact uh, Daniel as well. Um, yeah. In fact, let me find Daniel DeLuca's Twitter handle. Uh, I would actually um, encourage everybody to just try, like, if you're interested in technology, really try and maybe see if you want to host one of these workshops or on anything that passionate that you find passionate about because honestly it was pretty nerve wracking at first but it's just a really enjoyable experience it's been really fun going through all these different places and awesome. doing squiffy circuits and arduino and all this other good stuff cool and daniel de luca is at daniel daniel de d e luca l u c a um, and there is also a devops for kids um, twitter handle which is at devops two x's Four kids with a uh, four as a number rather than uh, F O R. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's I think that's everything that we've got then. Um, so massive thanks again, Pavi, for your time and uh, expertise. I hope well, thank everyone... you for setting this up. Oh no, it's our pleasure. Um, and thanks everyone at home for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time on the virtual jug or on the next virtual jug DevOps for Kids session. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Bye.